Hello, everybody. Good to have everybody here back. We are capping this week off with a bonus presentation that we're really excited about. Um, this is not the day to skip or show up late. So uh, I just want to say a big shout out to everybody that's been participating in our in our group and making offers. I've, I've been hearing some of some results coming down our way. So really, really cool stuff. But that means that you guys are uh, taking all of this and putting into action, and that is exactly what it's meant to do. So, uh, congratulations to everybody. That's amazing. That, there's nothing uh, that makes me more motivated and happy than to hear uh, this level of activity happening out in the field. So, um, kudos to everybody. And we are uh, we are not done yet because we have our last presentation of this five day offer challenge, and it's none other than a really really good friend of mine, mentor, coach. Um, I have known Jeff for a number of years. I think as I kind of calculated in my head, it was about seven years I've known Jeff. And I got to say that um, Jeff has just been an outstanding um, influencer in my life and somebody that I have um, just watched do hundreds or thousands, frankly, of one-on-one of, uh, -on -one coaching calls at the highest level. I've seen Jeff facilitate masterful, masterful, masterfully, not like I'm talking, but uh, small rooms and really facilitate incredible learning environments, as well as international huge thousands, multiple thousands of people on stage. So Jeff is, uh, he brings it every time, no matter what audience he's with. And I know that there's going to be no difference here. So uh, man, without further ado, let's welcome my good friend Jeff and his presentation on how we are going to take all of this and thrive in 2020. So Jeff, man, thank you for the presentation. Thank you for your time. We are all very grateful and uh, excited to see what you got here. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, Eric. I really appreciate that introduction. And boy, I'm pumped up to deliver on that type of expectation here for you, you know, our audience and all the real estate investors and business owners out there. So yeah, without further ado, I've got an action-packed uh, little presentation here for the next 30, 40 minutes or so. So I, I, I can't wait to get started. Let's do it. Okay, perfect. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear? I can hear you perfectly. I'm going to mute myself out so you don't get any distraction noise from me. But uh, man, awesome, Jeff. Looking forward to it. All right, perfect, perfect. Again, thank you so much to uh, Eric and the entire team at Refs Real Estate Funnel Systems and, and everybody here tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate and respect your time and attention, so I do not take that lightly. And with that said, I'm going to move at a fast pace. Uh, I know uh, everyone is busy, busy in today's world. And so with that said, I've got an action-packed presentation on a very, very relevant topic, and that is how to thrive. And what does that mean? What does that look like is what we're going to dive into. And specifically, how to thrive in 2020 and what's left of it. Here we're at June. We've got six months left of a very, very interesting year. And so with that said, let's get into it. I've got some visuals here. And so definition of thrive. I Googled it. What does that mean? And Google says it's to prosper and to flourish. And to break that down even further, it means succeed, growth, expand, and profit. So I'm definitely going to dive deep into those principles and share the key factors to make sure that's happening in your professional life and your personal life. So here we go. Without further ado, again, my agenda to cover how, though, how to thrive. The key word, quote unquote, how do you do this? Well, the bottom line is we're going to go into, like I said, almost seven key principles on how to thrive. And so you might be wondering, hey, will I learn anything new today? And the absolute answer is yes, of course. That's my mission here. As far as what I'm going to cover is the best techniques that I've been shown or exposed to by my mentors over the last 25, 30 years of professional and even personal training. So again, here we are. Uh, oh, before I do, I love to always put this friendly reminder out for your benefit, as it says. Please put your cell phone on vibrate or silent and maybe even turn it off for the next 30 minutes. Again, I promise you I'm going to be bringing 100% of everything I got. So I encourage you to lean in and give your 100%. Participate with us. Leave some comments. 
or uh, in the chat box, whatever it may be, definitely put them in there because myself, Eric, we review and read them and we'll absolutely get back. You know, if you got questions or a comment, by all means, we encourage it. And then of course, be open-minded, be, be coachable, be hungry for some knowledge. And then of course, no negativity. And so I'll thank you up front for that. And uh, uh, next slide I share is a funny one because I always get asked, hey, are you related to Jimmy Fallon? My name's Jeff Fallon, his name's Jimmy. Both starting with J and the answer is, yeah, somewhere in the family tree. I'm sure we're fourth or fifth cousins. I gotta do that ancestry.com thing and figure it out. But uh, I got to get a call into his people. If anyone watching knows Jimmy's, you know, PR or personnel, um, I know he's probably doing pretty good financially. And I definitely know where he can do some private money lending on some phenomenal real estate deals throughout the United States and even in Canada and abroad. So Jimmy, get back to me. All right. Be good to catch up. All right. Anyways, enough about that. Here's a little bit more about me just to get an appreciation of who's this guy, Jeff. And um, you know, I've done a handful of different things in business and specifically more so in real estate. Started buying houses in my early 20s and I'm in my late 40s now. So yes, over 20, 20 plus years is real estate. But I also held the corporate job for about 14, 15 years or so as I was saving money and using the medical benefits and 401k and you know the stuff they tell you when you're growing up, go to college, get a job. Well, I did that, but I did real estate nights and weekends for a while buying houses, fixing them up, running a construction company, and then managing my own single family homes and even two flat, multi-units, mobile homes. I've got a handful of experience in all different realms and different types of properties. And again, I'm from Chicago. You see the Chicago Blackhawks jersey, big sports fan, Cubs, Bulls, Bears, Hawks, for sure. And um, I know the thing with that is, you got to have some balance, have some fun, you know, really dedicated to work and building a portfolio and leaving a legacy, but also you got to enjoy life too. And that's where I want to think of a first little uh, challenge or, or um, you know, ask for some engagement here is, you know, I got um, proposed to do a, a fun challenge, if you will, is thinking of one word that describes you. What is one word that describes you? Or how would uh, another person that's very, very close to you to describe you in one word? your mom, your brother, your sister, your girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, wife, whoever that may be, or your grandparents, how would they describe you in one word? Well, I bring that up because here's the one word I got described, positive. So I claimed it, Mr. Positive. After 20, 30 years of personal development and training and going to live events and studying and reading and listening to audios, man, it's finally paid off as far as having a positive mental attitude and, and, a, and a, like a state of gratitude all the time. And so what's your word? I'd love to know it. Put it again in the comments or, or in the chat and uh, let's have some fun with that. And the other cool thing is I do this at live events. I have everybody write this down as far as, you know, we do, um, I've done trainings where uh, we've got three four day weekends with uh, 40, 50 different business owners. And so I have each one of them write this word down, describe the partner that they've been around for the last three days. And it's amazing to see what type of words come up with intelligent, brilliant, courageous, humorous, you know, just all these type of phenomenal type of people that I get to be around and, and train and speak with. And uh, again, I'm humbled and honored to do it. But man, you really see what type of people where they talk about, you know, your network is equal to your net worth. So again, what do you bring to the table is why I bring that up. All right. So we're going to keep it on the positive note. That's why I said no negativity in the slide before. All right. Share a little bit more. Uh, again, I've been fortunate the last three years to be doing a lot of international training on helping people grow as a business owner, CEO, or an investor, helping their presentation skills, sales skills, present, you know, uh, marketing and branding and all door, about 15 different topics we coach and speak and train on. And here's some more travels throughout all over the US and Canada. And then even uh, some big events, an annual event in LA where we're around a lot of high level celebrities, income earners, Mel Gibson, Hugh Hilton of the Hilton Hugh Hotels, Marky Wahlberg, and you know some rock and roll guys, Brett Michaels, Gene Simmons. But what was cool about listening and really hearing them is we got to hear their story of success how they overcame obstacles and challenges. And I know that you're gonna have some of your own in business and the business world out there is going to test you, okay? 
And so how do you respond? How do you show up? I'm going to dive into that in this presentation. But as always, I love to give uh, you know, praise to my mentors as I've had many different coaches and, and trainers out there. And so I've been in your same seat. I'm a note taker. And that's why, again, I encourage you to lean in and get the most out of what we're going to cover here today. And you know, uh, one of those trainers really taught me about learning takes blank. So again, if you're listening to this broadcast or this replay, I want you to type in right now, really engage, be 100% present here. And what do you think completes that sentence for you? Learning takes what? Put that in there. I'm going to wait a second. I'll take a gulp of water. Again, I'm going to go fast here. So this is high level, all right? And uh, we're going at like master's PhD level. If you got a question or got to hit the rewind button for 10 seconds, go for it. But I've got a lot to cover in a short amount of time. So learning takes what? Learning takes energy. Bring the energy. Make sure that you're showing up 100%, 110%, 150% as far as your energy. All right? That's going to definitely have its effect on other people. And that's where you get different titles to your name as far as positive, awesome, whatever that may look like. All right, here's another reason why I'm encouraging you to engage with me, because it's scientifically proven. Here's a couple stats for you. The cone of learning is for your benefit. I ask you a lot of times to engage with me so you retain. Who wants to retain 90% of what I'm going to cover two weeks from now? Again, you see here on the left, passive learning. 10% of what we learn, excuse me, 10% of what we read is only retained after two weeks. Well, here you go. I want to get into this right side, active learning, 90% of what we say and do at the same time. So if you've got a powerful dynamic presentation, you're going to have a lot more memory of some of the key components that was covered in that presentation. And that's my goal here today. So again, let's get into it. Mindset. When we're talking about Thrive 2020, I'm going to definitely speak on mindset. Again, after coaching and training, gosh, almost 7,000 coaching calls across, again, the whole world, really, it's um, been eye-opening as far as how a lot of different people operate. And I've coached people from, gosh, 18, 19 years old, all the way up into their 70s with all different types of backgrounds, teams and individuals, and then groups. It, again, it all comes down to a couple big key factors that I'm going to address here today in this presentation. So yeah, our beliefs lead to our thoughts. Our thoughts lead to our actions, and that creates the results. So how does that tie into what I want to talk about as far as how to thrive? Well, here we go. We must address the number one biggest challenge out there, the quote-unquote elephant in the room that I've heard about over and over and over. When I've got a student that I work with for six or 12 months, we get to know each other pretty darn good. And usually within the first month or two, we shift into what I call business coaching or real estate coaching into life coaching. A lot of times we got to go into some life coaching topics first so we can get those addressed and then work on our business. Sometimes we got to work on ourselves and our mindset first so we can blossom and really just go 100% and build our business, build our legacy, build our portfolio, et cetera. So again, what's the number one challenge 97% of us have as far as a reason or excuse of why action items did not get done? What is it? Again, put it in the comments. Engage. I want to see a lot of interaction here. So I encourage you. And again, no such thing as a silly question or a comment. So by all means, leave your feedback, please. Well, here it is. Most common challenge I hear about every day of the week is that four-letter word, the F word, I call it. Fear. So fear, what are we afraid of? I always pull a live audience, and I have a whiteboard. I'm writing it down. So here it is. That's why I like my whiteboard visual. What are we afraid of? What other people will think? A fear of failure. I've even heard people say fear of success. Someone told me one time that they fear success and making a lot of money because they don't want to pay more taxes. And then I usually pull the audience and say, well, who would be okay with sending a $100,000 check to the IRS? That means you made a lot more money, okay? So get over it as far as that goes, all right? Um, fear of losing money, fear of getting sued, fear of saying no, what are they going to think of me? So yes, a lot of that plays in our mindset. So would it be okay if I address this and give you some of the key components to overcome what are the things we could be afraid of or what's holding you back? Yes? Okay. All right. I thought so. That's why we're here. But before I go right into that, I just want to mention, and, and again, humble down as how much I'm human just like you. I can relate. Again, I've gone through some challenges and some obstacles have been thrown you know, our way, whether it's a worldwide pandemic or something personal, 
But yeah, I've had to close a business brick and mortar in my early days. Property management challenges when I first got started, I wasn't skilled, I wasn't trained. I thought I could just wing it until I found out, you know what, I had to chase rent, I had to put, um, a, you know, bring a tenant to court. I was afraid of going to court. I didn't think I wanted to, you know, go through that whole process and hire a lawyer. Well, I was naive, I was ignorant until I had to go to a four day boot camp, 12 hours a day on just property management. The trainer had over 700 doors or properties that he was managing. And so, yeah, I got the skills that I needed and boom, went to court and got the thing resolved and got my rent rolling back in the way it should. Job loss. Well, again, with this current pandemic, we've heard about the millions of people that are unemployed and filing for unemployment or stimulus support, et cetera. Well, I got laid off twice in my corporate career over 14 years because you know someone else, management, whatever it may be, ownership, made a bad decision or lost key accounts. That means my job goes bye-bye. I'll never forget, I was working a second shift in the graphic arts advertising agency um, industry. And there were five of us on second shift. Myself, I was only in my 20s. I work with gentlemen that were married with young kids that were split shifting the, you know, watching the toddlers at home with the wife working day shift. And we all got fired. The whole second shift got let go. I felt worse for my four buddies that had to go tell their wife and had children to feed at home than myself in my 20s. And I'll always remember that's what actually motivated me even more to show up in my business, my real estate business, because I didn't want to be left high and dry because of corporate America made a bad decision or lost the key account that supported a whole shift. So let that story resonate with you. Again, a couple more failed partnerships on one or two deals. Learn from that personal level. Who out there that can hear my voice right now has ever been affected with a loved one moving on because of cancer? Well, yeah. 15, uh, over 15 years ago, my dad, you know, he was a smoker, so lung cancer, but thankfully I had 15 months of closure when we found out. And, uh, but I talked to him every day, pray, you know, through prayer, etc. But bottom line is I'm super motivated to help find a resolution to fight this cancer. Now, hopefully by the day I pass on, we're a lot closer to bridging the gap on losing people to that terrible, terrible disease. Another one, divorce. Who's gone through that personal tragedy? You know, 12 years ago, I had to go through that, um, you know, went through some learning lessons there. And all these are learning lessons. That's what I think helped evolve me to become a you know, top level coach and trainer is because I can relate with a lot of people. I've been there, done that through some of the challenges. But moving beyond that, your test becomes your testimony. All right. I love that. And so let's get into this. Who wants to live without fear? Bottom line, let's get into the nuts and bolts of this. Who wants more confidence? I know I do. Yeah, I work on this all the time. And who wants a positive attitude no matter what? Me, me, me. Okay, yes, yes, yes. All right, good. Let's keep moving on. Fear. We've all heard this in the acronym. False evidence appearing real. What does that mean? What does that really look like? Well, the first word says false. So that means you should not believe it. It's false. There's no evidence really that it just appears. It's not real. All right. And so how about a new meaning? Instead of that, how about face everything and rise? That's the way to use the acronym for those four letters. All right. Or another one, face it, explore it, accept it, and then respond. Move on. Do whatever you got to do to get through that wall. Break through, go around it, go above it, whatever that may be. That's how you respond. And again, when you feel that kind of bubble up, if there's some kind of fear, that means something amazing is about to happen. You're going to break through and shine your light is the bottom line. You know, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable is usually when something magnificent happens, some type of miracle. So again, if you feel those little butterflies, that's normal. That means you have a pulse. That means you're alive. Okay. We all go through that. Anyone who says otherwise is probably lying. All right. Or they've done it a million times and it's like second nature. Okay. Which is what you get to. All right. Key principle number one. I said two, but number one, how, how do we thrive? How do we address fear? Well, here it is. Number one, I learned this long ago from Mr. Anthony Robbins. I got to give honor to him. He's one of my favorite trainers. Here's his book. I'm right in front of my bookshelf. You know, look at this thing. This thing's 25 years old. I reference it. It's like a business Bible. Awaken the giant within. How to take immediate control of many different areas of your life. And this is one of them. This grabbed me by the jugular when I read this book and was like, well, when I first started out in real estate, I was young. 
I'm 19, 20, 21 years old studying. I remember ordering programs off a late night infomercial TV and having people tell me I was crazy or wasting my money, stupid for buying that. And I just read it cover to cover. I remember I listened to those CDs when I was driving to work to and from hour over and over, just plugging my brain into it. But guess what? I still thought I was too young. And that's where I was associating pain with my, my, um, my activities as far as getting my real estate business off the ground. Oh, I would say, oh, I'm too young. The people in their 30s, 40s, or 50s will laugh at me. They're going to think I'm just inexperienced. Well, I learned that I have to narrow associate pleasure with my action items in real estate investing. And so what did that look like? Instead of thinking about the pain or some of the things that, you know, people laughing at you or some of the things I had earlier, what are you afraid of? You've got to shift into a pleasure principle in the front of your brain. And so what did I do? I thought about how great it would be once I'm done buying a property and fixing it up, selling it and cashing or depositing that fat check with profit. That was the pleasure that drove me over any kind of obstacles in the beginning, middle, or whatever stage that property was in to the pleasure part. Or if I was going to rent it out, receiving rent checks every month and having a profit to grow my portfolio. That's where the shift or the focus went into the pleasure side of it. So again, I invite you, it sounds simple, but it's you know, a little, one of those easier said than done type things where you really got to shift into the pleasure. And I think about it when we're talking about marketing and generating leads and following up, cold call. You've got to be on the pleasure side of it when every time you dial something, this could be the one. This could be the call. This could be the lead. This could be the one that's going to convert a 10, 20, 30, $40,000 profit. And when I say 10, maybe you're wholesaling between 5,000, 10,000, give or take, depending on where you live. But a good you know, flip is going to bring in 30 to $50,000 profit. Again, depending on your zip code, whether you're in the United States, Canada, or abroad. All right. So moving on. Here we go. Anthony Robbins, the secrets to success, learning how to use pain and pleasure instead of it using you. If you do that, you're going to have control of your life instead of life controlling you. So let that sink in. Awesome trainer, awesome speaker. If you've never seen him live, get out there and check it out. Another thing, here's quotes. I live by affirmations. My whole phone is full with them. And this is where I feed my brain and the positive stuff. But I love this one. Our deepest fear is that we're not inadequate. Like I thought when I was younger, our deepest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. Like really, ask yourself, who are you not to be brilliant, talented, fabulous, and gorgeous, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Well, you are. So stop playing small is the bottom line. Start serving the world. Start serving humanity. And if that's putting an awesome property and a good roof over somebody's head, well, then so be it. Let's make it happen. Bottom line. Moving on. Stop being afraid of what can go wrong. My God, we spend so much time in the garbage area of thinking and start thinking, you know, positive. Be positive about what can go right. When you make those calls, when you make those offers, we are problem solvers as far as real estate investors, all right? So help solve someone's problem and things will go right. Both sides of the equation. All right, next principle is how do we overcome some of these challenges? I call them curveballs, you know, whether it's different situations out in the world or the government, taxes, or whatever it may be, or someone didn't show up with the rent 100%. Uh, there's tons of things. Well, how do you overcome them? Excuse me while I hydrate a little bit here. Talking fast. Well, the bottom line is this. What little voice are you listening to? Are you listening to the one, my visuals over here, with the wings on your back, or the one carrying the pitchfork? Which one are you listening to? Which one's going to serve you to where you should be going? as far as how you were created to create greatness. Well, I'm gonna to listen to the one with the wings over there. So again, easier said than done, but once you're cognizant and you can pay attention, then definitely make sure you're listening to the correct voice that talks to you. Or am I the only one with a little voice in the back of the head? Maybe two, I know some people joke, I got three or four voices and that's all funny. But again, seriously, pay attention to what voice you're listening to and which one's talking to you. Also, who you surround yourself with. Some people say like, wow, the one that I sleep next to is more negative than I've ever you know, seen. So maybe have some talks, get with a coach, a trainer, a psych whatever that may look like, just to better your environment. All right, do what you got to do. Growth mindset versus fixed mindset. Wow, what another powerful, you know, again, mantra of 
I remember where in my early days, I was fixed. I'm like, no, I'm doing it this way. I've heard it from one mentor. I'm just staying the track. Well, there's other great mentors out there. I've got a whole library of books and trainings and three different bookshelves. I mean, my gosh. And some are audio. And now we've got podcasts, the technology. You can plug into a great training every morning, every night. And I absolutely encourage that. So yeah, embrace challenges. Or are you avoiding challenges? Do you give up easy? Or are you going to do whatever it takes no matter what? Learning from criticism or you know, constructive criticism like the way we say it. All right. So yes, make sure we're on the growth mindset. Again, this slide comes from an author of a book called Mindset. Her name's Carol Dweck, D-W-E-K. So check it out if you want to read further on that. Now, one thing I will talk about you know, is something that we're, you know, again, when I get into life coaching mode with some clients is they really get hung up and stuck in the past. And again, all due respect, I get it. I've been through some tough times personally, many different challenges on a personal and professional level, but we've got to learn from it. And one thing as far as letting it go is easier said than done. And yes, we all hear how time heals. Well, that's true too. But the bottom line, I like the analogy where we're driving a car and when you're driving a car, you've got a huge windshield. Make sure we're looking out the huge windshield versus staying fixated on the review mirror, the small little mirror that's right here. Keep your focus what? Keep your focus forward. Keep charging on. If you've got your goals and your vision and you're dedicated 100%, you know you're going to focus forward, okay? Because you should believe in yourself knowing that there's something inside you greater than any obstacle. So again, focus forward, bottom line. And so the next key component I want to talk about as far as how to overcome fear is you've got to get confidence. Well, how do you get confidence? How do we gain confidence? It just doesn't happen overnight. Well, here, let me, ex let me expose a great principle. Practice, practice, practice. Repetition, repetition, repetition. You know, I grew up playing a lot of sports. I've got a younger brother, my dad, the three of us, you know, male bonding stuff and other buddies around the neighborhood, teammates. I mean, baseball, book, basketball, football, hockey, tennis, every, everything. We played everything. And then I also at 14, 15, I got into martial arts. You know, I'm a small guy. I wanted to make sure I could defend myself, my family, God forbid, if anything crazy happened. And I loved it. I took to it. Uh, I thought I was going to go into gymnastics. Couldn't get into that. So I went into martial arts. And what do they say? 10,000 repetitions before you master anything. Well, I transfer that over into business. 10,000 sale calls. 10,000 calls with seller appointments, 10,000 offers, 10,000, 10,000. How many are there? I hear some people throw in the white towel after 100 attempts, 200 attempts, 500 attempts. We're talking 10,000. Don't come crying or complaining until we hit that number is what I was told. And I was like, whoa, that's kind of a verbal smack upside the head. So again, what type of practice? And again, here's another thing. Michael Jordan, I'm born and raised in Chicago. Some of you might have recently seen The Last Dance. We're recording this here in June of 2020. And so what an incredible insight to the way Michael was as far as his relentless passion on being the best. Bottom line, championships. Wanted to be associated with Magic, Larry Bird, and all the other greats in the game. And here, this is a guy that was cut from his high school basketball team. So he had the drive and the inner, like, just determination to do whatever he had to do to become relentless and be the best. Even his own teammates had to tell him to cool down and practice. I mean, think about that. And again, I saw it, you know, I probably watched Michael 90% of his games, if not more, because I love watching the best. I don't care what sport it is or what, even in business, you got books, companies, and stuff. I'm gonna learn, I'm open, I'm ready to receive and just pick some kind of golden nugget that maybe I can apply into my life and business. So same here is why I'm doing this presentation. And here's a fun example. You know, I had a wheelie challenge when I was a teenager from my father and said, hey, if you can ride a wheelie from here to here on a regular BMX bike, I'll get you a unicycle. And I was like, challenge accepted. Okay, great. Two weeks later, here we go. He made good on his promise. And, you know, a month or two later, I'm riding around a parking lot with a unicycle. Again, just another fun little challenge that if you apply a certain action and stay dedicated to it, you're going to get a result. All right. And same for other people that are famous people out there that we've all heard of that had a lot of challenges or curveballs and failures show up early in their career. So again, some of those are your tests that become your testimony. And you're going to share that story at some point. 
And here later on, through many, many years of practice and bumps and bruises, and you know, I couldn't even tell you how many things I went through with getting up to the ranks of a certain level in martial arts. And it was a sport and a fitness. And again, yeah, defense skills and all that, but I just couldn't get enough. And so same for you, I invite you, how are you showing up in your practice, okay? And where does your motivation come from? Where do you actually get motivation? Well, I wanna to speak to that because again, thankfully I've had some great trainers out there that you saw earlier in the presentation that taught me some of the skills on, on to cultivate even more motivation, okay? And so it's your why. Why are you doing this? Why are you on this call? Because you're a winner. I know you're an overachiever. And the bottom line is you have certain goals that you want to attain in this lifetime, probably both in business and on a personal level. So for me, what's my why? Well, I've been taught that it either comes from desperation or inspiration. And I've been on both sides of this equation. And I, I have both of them fire me up. You know, one or the other, well, yeah, use both, whatever you can to get fired up. And as far as motivation, for me, you should all have your family listed first. Have a picture of your family. This collage here is front and center a lot of times. So if I got a bad day or a bad week, I look at this photo right here, boom, I get fired up, get right back on the horse per se. Same thing with, you know, my grandmother. She lived till 95 years old and just always said, Jeff, no matter what you do, do your best. Put 100% of your effort into it. And I always did just to make her proud, my parents proud, my family proud, etc. So I know you've got the same thing in you and your heart and soul. So don't ever not show up 100% on your activities. All right. And here's some more inspiration. Man, I get the honor as a trainer and a coach to go work one on one with some incredible people as they're coming up through the ranks. Here, Unstoppable Tracy. Find her on Instagram. She's inspiring. When we first met her, she was uh, very much established and, and uh, successful in her corporate career. MBA, PhD, uh, she's, done a, she's a professional sailor and she does all these great activities and she even has no legs. You can't see that in this picture here, but born like this. And I'm thinking, wow, a lot of people I've worked with have arms, legs, fingers, toes, everything and they come up with some kind of excuses that might be on the weak side as far as if you ask her. So again, show up 100% bottom line. And uh, you know, Tracy, she actually, I'll give her a little shout out, two years ago became the top speaker in front of a crowd of almost 3,000 entrepreneurs from all over the world. And I remember helping her put that presentation together from an outline standpoint, the slides, what she was gonna deliver, how she delivers it. So yeah, an honor to see her and I applaud her success and cheer her on every way. Like all my other clients and students that are along the way, man, there are so many success stories and testimonials. Don't have time to get into all those right now. But again, those can fire you up. Be surrounding yourself with people on your local level. If you're going to your local meetings or whatever kind of podcast you're in or Facebook groups, by all means, let that feed the fires, the bottom line. Here's another one. If you don't have something, maybe a small family or, or whatever it may be, then look into other areas that inspire you. Where can you give back? A Habitat for Humanity is a great to put some sweat equity in there for us real estate investors. You know, Special Olympics, Wounded Warriors, I like Make-A-Wish Foundation, a lot of charities that really like pull the heartstrings that inspire you like to tears of joy. And you see the smiles on their faces that are just like, oh man, again, might not have perfect abilities or somewhat of a disability, but yet they're here giving it their all. So no excuse for you or I is the bottom line. And here's another great example, Nick Vukovic. Man, I've seen him speak live twice and both of them moving beyond tears. Probably one of my favorite speakers on the planet, born with just a little foot. And by all means, this guy went through bullying to the highest level when he was a kid and has overcome it and speaks to thousands, if not millions of people every single year with his message. Beyond Powerful, check it out, YouTube or live if you ever get a chance. Again, just to keep that fire lit on a high level. Because here's the bottom line, people only see what happens on the surface or social media, or like I said, maybe cash and depositing a check, but underneath we know what it takes as an entrepreneur and an investor. Failure, overcoming failure, persistence, sacrifice. You can see these words here, dedication, hard work. Absolutely. And so you can make excuses or you can make progress. It's one or the other. It's your choice. And so, yeah, bottom line, let's see on the progress. And, you know, moving forward, another key component is PMA. 
I'm going to pause here for a second and take a drink of water because, again, I'm talking fast at a fast pace, and I hope you're keeping up with me here. But bottom line is fill in the blank. What's PMA? Put it in the comments or the chat. Well, here's the answer. Positive mental attitude. Who's got a 10 out of 10 as far as on positive mental attitude? Raise your hand. Put some, put some claps in there. Put some hearts in there. Well, how do you create a positive mental attitude? How do you stay up? How do you, how do you stay on the, you know, again, positive realm, even if there's major curveballs coming in the world or in your industry? Well, I would encourage you to create a, what I call a power hour. And that is in the first thing in the morning and late at night. And so what does that look like? Set yourself up for success with what I call rituals. In fact, schedule that time. I call it Jeff time. So the first hour I wake up, usually like 6.30, to 7.30, I don't take any calls, emails, texts, nothing. I'm programming my mind into, again, positive affirmations. Might be a positive podcast. And same thing at night. As you wind down, I actually might watch a sitcom and have it as comedy. So you can actually, you know, again, laugh, enjoy life, have some balance, whatever that may be for you. Okay? So, again, have some rituals that set you up for success is the bottom line. And I'd love to work further with anyone that may be interested to dive deeper. I'm hitting a lot of bullet points or what I call ninja tips on the surface. But you can see there's a handful that can give one person, maybe two or three, the aha moment. Man, I'm not doing that. I got to start implementing this. And so, yes, I'd be invite you to where, again, we can have a discovery call. I'm sure we'll put the... Um, the link as far as a calendar or, or again, direct message to work one-on-one -on -one with me or someone on the team, by all means, be happy to do that. Because again, your attitude is determined by your altitude, huh? Oh, is that written right? Yeah. Well, your attitude is everything is the bottom line. You know, I love to look out like the Grand Canyon or the mountains in Utah or here I'm in Arizona when you can just see for miles and miles and it just brings up your overall attitude. All right. So are you in uh, like an attitude of gratitude or something quite the opposite? So where do you measure up on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest with your attitude on a daily basis? Again, do a self check. And here I'm going to just invite, you know, we've had a rough, rough 90 days with the world pandemic that's come out of nowhere and uh, other hot topics that are going on. And so, you know, I put this slide in here so we could just take you know, step back and a deep breath to really like resonate on what can create some smiles for you. I mentioned a comedy, you know, you can see it on your phone or YouTube, but you know, com comedy comedians. And I'll tell you what, I remember a stat, I saw it on Facebook, so it must be true. The average four-year-old smiles 50 times more than your average adult every single day. So what happened to us adults? We forget like that important thing called joy, happiness, creating a smile. You watch three or four year olds play, you can't help but smile. So remember the little kid in you once in a while or whatever brings you joy to put a smile on your face, that's gonna resonate through other areas in your life. So that's why I take a second to talk about it. Definitely make sure you smile. Cause here's why, there's no time to be angry, bitter, depressed, grouchy, my gosh. I mean, if, we always talk about like when you're in your 80s or 90s and you're, you know, getting to that time that there is just all this, oh, I wish I would have done this or I wish I wouldn't have done that. Well, forget that. The time is now. Again, I've talked about people that are like, oh, if you're going to quit anything, I love this side. Well, how about quit making excuses? Quit being lazy. Quit blaming others. Quit doubting yourself. Have faith in the talents that you've been given from your creator and go for it 100%. If you need a coach or a trainer, then get one. If it's me, awesome, great. I look forward to it. If not, get somebody else. I know I've had so many different coaches and mentors that help me get to the next level or the next step or the next deal, whatever that looks like. Don't be shy about that, okay? There's support and help out there. So here we go. Are you ready to finish strong? I've asked and encouraged you to engage and you know, put some comments in here. And everyone's usually, if I'm in a live audience, yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, good. We've got a lot of different tips here to how to overcome different obstacles. But look at this. That's me coming out of the womb doing one-arm push-ups. So that's what I mean. Are you ready to finish strong? Here we go. All right. Let's have some fun with this. Talking about the positive self-talk. I've got two friends that are great trainers and psychiatrists and trained in that profession that wrote a book. They're from Australia. It's called Mental Wealth. 
by Emmy Golding and Peter Diet. Little plug there. Uh, on my Facebook timeline, you can see me do a little um, you know, shout out to them. But mental wealth, they've been trained, again, more in the corporate realm on how important it is. And we've heard this about how important it is over the last three, four, five years with different stuff going on in the workplaces, that type of thing. And it's all about self-talk. I can, I can, I will, I will, I will. So let's see. Let's see how you show up here. We got our old buddy here, James Brown, and it makes me remember about playing some great music. I mentioned that in the rituals earlier, your nightly rituals, daily rituals, morning. If you've got a commute in your car, are you listening to your favorite music to get you amped up? You know, I feel good. Can you say that? I feel good. I feel good. How many times can you say that each morning? I feel good. Taking a good hot shower after a workout. I feel good. Something like that. If you're a runner or a jogger, whatever it is you do to get your blood pumping, awesome. You feel good. Well, I challenge you to lean in with me here as you speak life is what I call it into yourself every single day. Can you imagine if you woke up and said this in your own first, you know, your own presence here, as far as your name, you say, I, Jeff Fallon, am a person of integrity, good attitude. I've got specific goals. I've got high energy level. I'm enthusiastic. I take pride in my appearance. I have a sense of humor. I have faith. I have wisdom and I have a vision empathy and courage to use my talents effectively, character, and it goes on and on. And that's a whole page, gang, okay? And I've had a shortened one, too. Here's another one. I call it a champion's creed. Same type of thing. So I switch between different ways I talk to myself and feed or speak life into your brain. I am a champion. I believe in myself. I have the will to win. I set high goals. I surround myself with winners. I'm relaxed and in control. I focus my energy at the job at hand. I can picture and imagine fulfilling my dreams. I am a champion and I will win at life. So again, if you want a copy of that, put it in the comments, speak life to me. Champions Creed, whatever it may be. We can send you the PDF and post it up, no problem. All right, moving on. Here's the fun part. Again, lean in with me. Commitment to excellence, speaking life into yourself. This is where, again, my father, when he was training, my brother and I, as far as in sports and whatever, we're playing and growing up. And when you're a younger guy, you only want to do the fun stuff, hitting and that kind of thing. And I remember saying the word, I can't do this. And Manny came right up to me and said, son, we're not allowed to say that word. The C word, we call it, can't. And so, of course, you cut the T off and say, I can't. Okay. So again, that's a taboo. It's almost like a curse word in my vocabulary. So pay attention to your vocabulary. How are you speaking to yourself? Well, again, I'm going to encourage you to do this every single day and commit to excellence. Say this with me out loud right now. Uh, if you're alone at home or however you're broadcasting this, pull over if you're driving. I don't know. But to really make this impact, and I want you to see how you feel after this, and say it with me. I feel great. I feel happy. I feel fantastic. I feel phenomenal. Say it louder. I feel phenomenal. I feel empowered. I feel energized. I feel excited. I feel inspired. And I'm unstoppable. I feel unstoppable. I feel confident. And I feel no fair talking about what we were in this whole thing today as far as Thrive in 2020 and beyond. I feel no fair. So you pick out three, four, five words, maybe all of them. Move on to the next one. I am. Speak another way. I am. Awesome. I am brilliant. I am courageous. I am determined. I am enthusiastic. I am focused. I am intelligent. I am incredible. Say it again. I am incredible. Let that sink in. I am worthy. I am a winner. I am a winner. I am on fire. When you say I'm on fire, that means what? I'm going to take it to the next level. I'm on fire like nothing's going to stop me. Here's another one. Last but not least, I will. This is committing. What are you going to do? I will work hard. I will give 100%. I will smile more. I will love more. I will what? Stay in my greatness. I will share my gifts and talents. I will make more money. I will what? Leave a legacy. I will leave a legacy. I will have integrity. I will give back. And I will never, ever give up. I will never give up. And then boom, say yes. I will say yes to opportunity. I will say yes to good deals. I will say yes to building my network. And that's how you do your mantra. And so if you're waiting for a sign to kind of wake up or get shaken by, you know, a, a, a trainer here that's speaking some life into you, then boom, this is it. Bottom line, here's the summary as we wrap it up, gang. And again, I thank you for your time and attention. I really do appreciate it. And if you've had any kind of like, you know, feedback or positive impact here with our short time together, 
awesome. But here it is in summary. Build a belief in yourself. This is how you do it. Speak life into yourself every single day, every single morning, two, three times a day. Sometimes I think of even when you eat meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, before or after those situations. Speak life into yourself just so you can really get it happening subconsciously and consciously sooner than later. Build your confidence. How do you do it? You, you, you've seen it. Practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice, practice. Role play with somebody. Get a coworker, one of your best friends to really practice and give you some constructive criticism. And go to work. Use these cell phones now. Record yourself. See what you look like. See what you say. What are your mannerisms? All that type of stuff. Don't be too harsh on yourself in the beginning, though, either. I'll say that. We can all be very hypercritical. I know I'm my worst critic sometimes when I'm speaking or training. Like, oh, my God, I can't believe I said this. We're human, gang. It's okay. Have a positive mental attitude every day. And as I said, F-E-A-R stands for face everything and rise. Faith trumps fear. And so with that, I'm here to encourage you to take action. I like to say take massive action is the bottom line. And so with that, thank you so much for your time and attention. And, you know, as a friendly reminder, no such thing as a silly question. Ask anything, you know, type it in the chat or the comment. Uh, my website, urceo.com. Again, I thank you for your attention, interaction, and I look forward to seeing you soon. If it's at a live event, awesome. If it's on our webinar or in Facebook group, great. And you could follow me as Positive Coach 24 7 on Instagram and Facebook, um, my business page, my full name, Jeffrey Fallon. And again, have a great rest of your day. We'll see you soon. Bye bye.